And as for you, young lady, I think we all know how this conversation is going to end, so why don't we do just that right now? Oh, when are you going to stop treating me like a baby? Why can't I run my own life? Tell me what you're talking about. You're free to do anything you want to do, as long as you check with me and your mother first. <laughs> It's a beautiful ring, Thelma. I, mean, I see the ring, but where's the diamond? <laughs> James, no. The jeweler said it's a perfect diamond. It's got to be perfect. There ain't no room in there for a floor. James, <laughs> Oh, I thought you'd all be happy. Baby, baby, it's a beautiful ring, and I know what it means to you. And it isn't that we don't like Larry. Huh? <laughs> but we gotta think of what's best for you, honey. And you should, too. Add up all you got going for you. You got brains, you got personality. And look at that face. Thelma, you better grab him quick. <laughs> Daddy wanted me to marry a doctor or a lawyer, somebody like that. But I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't fall in love with one. I fell in love with Larry, and that's all that counts. Because I love him. I love him. I love him! So you love him, you love him, you love him. Honey, you're okay on those first two I love him. But that third one worries me. Well, it don't bother me at all. Because the engagement is off, Larry is out, and I don't want to hear no more about it. Lord, please. Uh, Dad, could I say something? Dad, I love and respect you, but in this case, you're wrong. What? <laughs> this time, I got to hang in there with Thelma. Well, that's just what's going to happen. You keep popping them chops. <laughs> No, nah, Dad, I mean, Larry's a good man. And if Thelma loves him and she thinks that he can make her happy, they should have the right to take a shot at it. JJ, is that you saying that? I can't believe it either. Well, if it is, he better unsay it. <laughs> now, Junior, I don't want your opinion on this. Matter of fact, I want to hear another word out your mouth on this. Here, son. No, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Junior, maybe I didn't say that quite right. Now, I don't want to hear another word out your mouth on the subject. Now, that's clear now, ain't it, son? No, Dad. <laughs> All right, Junior, I'm going to say this one more time. I don't want to hear one more word out your mouth on the subject. Not one word. Now, that's clear now, ain't it, Junior? No, Dad. James, James, please! Dad, I know you're the head of the family, and I know I went against you, and I know what you might do. I'm six foot one, and if you gave me a shot to the top of my head, I'll be four foot eight. <laughs> or you could simply break me in half. Uh-uh, no, I have two of you running around here. <laughs> no, I never do that, Junior. All I want you to do is zip them lips. <laughs> See, this is a matter that's gonna be decided between me and your mother. That one's for me. Oh, 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 how lovely. Yes, it's a needlepoint. I made it myself. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bentley. Yes, an East Indian friend of mine suggested it. It's a Hindu design symbolizing love. Hindu? Isn't it a shame that a culture which creates such beauty is so unaware of the ways of our Lord? It's unfortunate that until these people can accept the true light, they're doomed eternally to the fires of hell. Oh, and my friend is such a nice fellow, too. <laughs> Anyway, it's beautiful, Mr. Benny, and I'm gonna hang it right up. I don't know that we'll have room for it, Florence. Uh, 
What Buzz means is that um, at the moment, uh, all we can afford is his little bachelor apartment. But the Lord will provide. You know, Buzz, I was thinking maybe I could help provide. I could get a job and we could save up for a house. No, no, dear. I don't want my wife to work. <laughs> you marrying the right woman. <laughs> Meant until Lawrence, I think you must have heard me the first time. I said, no, if you plan to be a good wife, dear, your place is in the home. And in the home, there can only be one master. Master? The good book says the head of the woman is the man. Now, you are the woman, and I am the man. Yeah, but I... Uh, Florence, hey, here's our present from George and me. Oh, Miss Jefferson. Wow. Oh. It's beautiful. How do you like it, Buzz? Put it back in the box. But don't you like it? Put it back in the box. But, Buzz, I... Put the damn thing back in the box. <laughs> it's okay, Buzz. We all know you were thinking darn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Forgive me, my friends, please, for my, my blasphemy. Uh, if you like, Florence, you can exchange it tomorrow. I think you should do that. Why? Because only a sinner would wear such a thing. What are you talking about? Weezy's got one just like it. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> I mean, I, I bought one for a lady friend. Uh, uh, Tom, I'd like a drink of water. Uh, will you come with me? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> Yes, I'm a bit parched myself. Uh, Buzz, I only meant I to... know exactly what you meant. You meant to corrupt my Florence with this... this garment. I... You're a sinful woman! Now, wait a minute, chump! Sit down! <laughs> and don't call my man a chump. Now, look here, chump! <laughs> Florence, how dare you talk to me like that? I'll talk to you any way I want. But Florence, you know And that... I'll wear anything I want. I used to think of you as my angel. Some angel. The moment you called this sweet woman a sinner, you lost your wings and sprouted a tail. Now, Florence, you... This woman is a saint. Look who she married. <laughs> this woman has more Christian charity in her little finger than you got in your whole Bible-thumping body. I guess I was wrong about you, Florence. I thought you were a decent Christian. In the scriptures, you'll find the words... That's your problem, Buzz. You know all the words, you just don't know what they mean. <laughs> the engagement is off. Hot damn! <laughs> And I didn't mean darn. <laughs> oh, Florence, I'm sorry. Oh, ain't no need to be sorry, Miss Jefferson. That dreamboat should have sunk a long time ago. <laughs> I guess the only thing I was in love with was the idea of getting married. Then I'd say we still have a reason to celebrate. Anybody want a drink? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go get some napkins. Hold on, come back here. <laughs> but, Mr. Jefferson, I'm only doing what a maid is supposed to do. Wrong. I'll show you what a maid is supposed to do. Florence, I need a drink. Me too, and make mine a double. <laughs> Mr. Bunker. Hi. Jim Spencer, Fidelity Insurance. It's about your wife's policy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a tough man to track down. Yeah, well, I've been pretty busy lately. To tell you the truth, we're very busy right now, setting up a lunch rush, you know, and I, I gotta go back and fix it, Rage and tell it. Oh, well, this won't take but a minute. <laughs> okay, if we sit here? First off, please accept condolences on behalf of myself and Fidelity Insurance on the death of your wife, Judith. Uh, that was Edith. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. I have trouble reading my own handwriting. Maybe I should have become a doctor, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I have here a beneficiary death claim which states that uh, Edith Bunker died on the date indicated. And if you just sign it right there, I'll present you with a check for $5,000. Oh, I ain't gonna sign that. What? 
I don't want to be no beneficiary. What do you people think that I can just sign a poison off the wall like that? I, I, I don't want it. You just send it out to my daughter in California. It's Gloria Stivic. She lives in Santa Barbara. Well, why don't you do that, Mr. Bunker? I mean, you can endorse the check right over to her. But you see, as beneficiary, I need your signature on the death claim. I ain't signing no death claim. Oh, you're a big company. Can't you just leave me alone and, and, and do what I'm asking you to do? Send it out there to my daughter. Uh, maybe I'd better call the home office. Yeah, well, listen, uh, uh, use the pay phone down the subway, huh? This one's out of order. It's out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Archie Bunker's place, eight Bunker here. Uh, ho hold a line a minute, huh? Down the subway, huh? I'm back with you. Yes, that's right, Stephanie Mills. What do you mean? She's fine. What? Yeah, well, no, I, did, I didn't know, but uh, I'll handle it. All right, all right, all right, I'll handle it. Why? Oh, holy cow. What happened? It's the kid. She ain't been in school for a week. Answering machine is out of order. This is a real live person speaking. <laughs> Phone call for Ashley Payne. Jennifer, I don't suppose it occurred to you to ask who it was on the phone. It's Tom Cruise. He says he'll die if you don't marry him. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny, Jennifer. By the way, Jen, what's new in chess land, huh? Anything? <laughs> Ashley Payne. I bet she shortened her name from Payne in the butt. You're just jealous because Ashley has bigger boobs than you do. My grandmother says well brought up ladies don't call them that. So what do you call them? Hooters. <laughs> How do you spell vomitorium? What are you writing? A letter home asking them to spring me from this place. Again? You know they want you to be here. Well, maybe they'll feel sorry for me if I enclose last night's dinner. <laughs> Excuse me, I hate to interrupt this meeting of the Doofus Club, but I just heard that some boys from Havenhurst are going to be transferring here. Great, preppies, a bunch of guys whose last name is the third. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The girls' dorm, it's all coming back to me now. The faint aroma of hairspray and grape bubblegum. Hey, Terry, did you meet Blair? I mean, Miss Warner. Yeah. That's a lovely sweater you're wearing. It has a hole in it. <laughs> Hello, Pippa. Is this your mom? No, Ashley. This is Blair Warner, the new owner. Blair, oh. this is Ashley Payne. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, my father, your banker, told me all about you. Look, here's the deal. You need to be nice to me. I'm glad you pointed that out. Otherwise, it may never have happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, Miss Warner, my father just hates it when I'm unhappy, and <laughs> somehow he always seems to find out about it. Ciao. Don't mind Ashley. Even her friends don't like her. <laughs> she has friends? Hello, <laughs> Pippa. Photosynthesis making any sense to you lately? I think that's a hint to go and study. I'll see you later. Might that be a good idea for the rest of you? Well, why don't we sing a medley of inspirational folk songs? <laughs> So, 
How's it going, Warner? You ready to throw in the old monogram towel yet? Would you mind telling me exactly what it is you have against me? Well, curfew is due in a couple hours, but I think I can give you an overview. Ooh, overview. Three syllables. Very good. Let's not get all bent out of shape about this. Actually, I like you. So why don't you sell the school to someone who knows what he's doing and give me your phone number? Oh, you really know how to pour on the charm, don't you? <laughs> Look, if you don't like my being here, then why don't you just leave? Because I would like to see this school undergo a transition from being what it was to being what it could be. And I think what it could be is better. So do I. Well, good. Let's have dinner. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, I'm afraid this just isn't going to work out. I'm going to have to ask you to... I have you a to contract. ...grudgingly cooperate. <laughs> you know, you and I will get along a lot better once we have a new headmaster. You ever get it together enough to find one? I got a memo for you, mister. As of right now, we have a new headmaster. Me. You? Faculty meeting Thursday. Don't be late. <laughs> It wasn't supposed to be like this, you know. I was supposed to be the first one to go. I know I always used to kid you. Are you going first? You know I never meant none of that. And that morning when you was laying there, I was shaking you and yelling at you to go down and fix my breakfast. I didn't know. You had no right to leave me that way. You could... <sighs> Without giving me just one more chance. Say, I loved She was the one who was supposed to stay down here with you, you know. Not me. Because I ain't no good at none of this. I'll tell you what we do on Saturday, you know. I'll borrow Murray's car. And you and me would take a little ride up to the cemetery. Can we bring flowers? Yeah, sure. What kind? Carnations. Oh, yeah. And she was always crazy about carnation. Come on. Are you all right now? 
I'm all right. Should I start cooking dinner? Yeah, you can do that. But, but first, uh, I think you better go to linen chest out there and get some stuff for the bed here. Jeez, who the hell stripped this bed? Aunt Mabel from Hackensack. Oh, <laughs> Hackensack. Uh, how did she think I was ever going to use my bed without no sheets and blankets and pillowcases here? Oh, God, them people from Jersey is brutes. 